Um, let's go ahead and dive into the NFL picks. Are you ready to rock and roll with this? Now, yep, they, these, are not, got them. these are not our official best bets. These are, we're going through the Big games, the best, uh, the, the best slash biggest slash most interesting games of the weekend. Uh, did you get the list that I sent over to you? I did, but I, I, I know most of these games. I've, okay. I've looked at these games ever since Monday night was over. There you go. There you go. <laughs> let's talk about Thursday night. We got the Miami Dolphins going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and if nothing else, the battle between the quarterbacks is going to be interesting. They have been uh, throwing out haymakers in the media ever since so Monday fun. night, and it, this between Ryan Fitzpatrick and uh, uh, Gardner Minshew, between the mustache and the beard, this has been a lot of fun to pay attention to. These two guys could not be more different at all. That's a, and somehow I think they're kind of similar, right? One's an old Maybe. guy, one's, one's a young old, guy. One's one's old and Ivy League educated. The other is is the definition of Mississippi bumpkin, like <laughs> like education just rolls off of him, off of water, off a of duck's ass, like it, pff, whatever. And both of these Florida teams are supposed to not be very good this year, and yet both are showing quite a bit of fight. So, yeah, well, I think I think a lot of that attestment is to the quarterbacks and the coaches. Yes, I that's I, I really like the coaching staff that Brian Flores has put together and what he's done. And I've said it before, man. Listen, Doug Marone is not a bad coach. He just got saddled in in this hellhole of Jacksonville, and he can't shake it. Yes, no, you're you're right about that. The Jags are a three point favorite at home on Thursday night. I. Look, I've I told you this before. I'm not going to bet against Jacksonville. I'm not betting against Gardner Minshew. How's that? Uh, yes, sir. So I, since we're making picks on these games, I'm going to go ahead and take the Jags minus the three. I don't feel great about it. it there no. is not an outcome in this game that would surprise me, other than one or the other being completely like walloped in this game. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I either one of these teams winning and winning close. I think it's going to be a fun game. Here's the problem with with the way the national media has covered the NFL lately. All right, they talk about the star teams, they talk about the the, the star players, and everybody in the country that half ass covers this game or cares about the NFL is going to say, "Oh, this is one you can just miss," and they're all going to miss an exceptional football game. Oh, last week we got the Bengals and the Browns, and this week we get Jacksonville and Miami. Man, the NFL is just really killing it with this Thursday night football. No, these are fantastic games. These are going to be great matchups. I'm so looking forward to this, and uh, and yeah. I'm right there with you, man. I'm not betting against the Mississippi mustache. I'm just not. This kid just plays like hell. I think he'll make one or two more plays more being the young gun and taking the chance and, uh, and, and pull one out. I think, uh, I think you're right here. Um, now that we're moving into the Sunday games, uh, the first one on the docket here is the Raiders at the Pats, by the way. Uh, Damian said Miami gets the upset. Brown Yeti said, I have the winning teams this week. I'm currently 32-0. Cheers to that, Yeti. We love you. We love you. Terry said, don't know if you did it earlier, but you need to brag on that Raiders pick you threw out Monday, Gary. Uh, th- since we're talking about the Raiders and the Pats, Pats are a six-and-a-half-point favorite. I will go ahead and brag just a little bit. Look, I just got lucky with that. There was nothing about that game that told me that the Raiders should win, other than Michael Thomas being out. But even still, I, it looked like the Saints should have been able to win that football game. It, I bet it. Mainly because we had not had an upset all weekend, and that's, it. that's just absurd. That's it. You're so, right. You're a hundred percent right. And 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 I should have followed suit, and I didn't have the stones to do it. You did it. That's awesome. It's no. a, I needed I needed more to go well for me that weekend after that college football week. I'll tell you that. That's right. That's right. That's okay. It so, did. It's it, good. Yeah, it did hit, and it it helped because I mean I got it at like plus one ninety, man. Yes. So, feeling of uh, feeling pretty good about that full show. So with the Raiders and the Pats, Raiders obviously riding high, 2-0. and They got the win over the Saints. They got a win on the road. Uh, same time slot, right? Noon Eastern time. They go on out, and they uh, they looked good against Carolina. They looked good against the Saints. This Raiders team, they got something going. It, this Derek Carr thing looks good right now with this offense. Waller looks good, even though Ruggs wasn't like full speed or anything. You know, he's playing. Josh Jacobs, it looks like one of the best running backs in the NFL I, you know, I'll go with the Raiders here against the Pats, like six and a half, maybe a little, little too much so, here. 
It's a lot of points. It's, it's yeah, a it's lot just of a points. A ton of points. So I I'm gonna go with now. Of course, Raiders coming off of a short week, and then they have to play the early game. Eh, I'm I'm a little. I'll take the Raiders here. I don't feel great about it because of the short week and the early time slot. Um, but I'll, I'll take the Raiders here. I think they're playing fun football, man. I, I think they look good, and I think the Pats are are just as comfortable winning by three as they are by seven. All right. All that means, I like the Raiders, too. I've actually really enjoyed watching them this year and uh, the first two games of the season so far. Been a lot of fun, and, and I'm going to keep liking watching them. I'll get back on that train next week. I think the Patriots are about to go on the run. I really do. I got a feeling on this team that – the way they lost to Seattle, Seattle might be the best team in the NFL. Yes. I that agree. might that might be the most complete offense in the NFL. That's including Jack uh, uh, Kansas City. That is including Baltimore. Do not talk about the most complete offenses without talking about Seattle as well. Okay. Agreed. They, they hung with that team. Cam Newton is getting into his own, putting up tons of yards, uh, uh, throwing the football, throwing seeds. Man, I – I did think you, there's going to hey, be a lot of. Did you see the picture of Belichick this morning? <laughs> <laughs> I had an absolute blast looking at that because I, I thought, how awesome is this? Like this guy, guy does my not guy. care. <laughs> he just doesn't care. I I love this man. I wish I had the stones of him. Listen, I've I tried on three hats before we started here just because I'm self conscious about the way my head looks right now. Okay, <laughs> and this guy gives no f's whatsoever at all and that's that's what makes it hard to bet against him right is hey i lost with him last week and that's okay like no big deal but i i do i do like the raiders this week for sure so you're you're riding pats though yeah i'm I'm not i'm not betting against this team i can understand it i love them too much terry said uh you're always feeling on the pats chris only other time you get hard eyes is when you talk about burrow <laughs> he hey, ain't wrong we'll talk about burrow later uh damien said pats win by six uh, Philip Wiggins said, "How often do the Pats lose two games in a row under Belichick? Uh, it doesn't happen often. I'll tell no, you. That. I don't think. I, I don't know that Gary's calling for him to lose the game. Which no, 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 no. obviously, I think they could lose the game. I think the Raiders are good enough to to hang and compete with most teams. Patriots are not outside of that realm. But but you're taking the six six and a half points. So yeah, uh, I'm just taking the six and a half points. I ain't, I ain't taking them to win in Foxborough. That's crazy. Rodney Johnson said, "How about those Buffalo Bills, baby? Hey, you hang out, Rodney." We are going to talk about the Bills here in just a little bit. They got a fantastic matchup this weekend. Uh, Brown Yeti said, everyone hated on my man Carr last year, but it was new and colorful coach. I will tell you this. Carr didn't play like gangbusters last year. Uh, he was okay. He was not great by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I do like him so far this year. I think you bring well, he's in He's got Mariota. a couple of new weapons this year, too. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and you bring in some competition for him. Competition, yep. I think, is good. Man, I've been saying, dude, I've been beating that drum for, for a decade. Oh, yeah. Just bringing a young kid in and giving him the keys to the Ferrari is just not always the smartest thing in the world. Sometimes you got to put somebody behind them to push their ass. Yep. And Don't, and so don't far, just bring a dinosaur in to, 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 to coach them. All right? No, no. Bring in Mariota to compete with him. And, yes. And this is what you're getting. So, yeah, Football's I like the move. It's about competition. I, no, I, I'm with you. I am with you. Moving on, Rams at the Bills. Bills are a two and a half point favorite right now. That's pretty much across the board. I, um, I'll go on to tell you. I like this Bills team a lot. I think the Rams have been lucky uh, in play, not not in the games, but in the schedule so far. I don't think the Cowboys are all that great. Yeah, we're finding I, that out. I don't think the Eagles are very good at all. And no. and everybody is kind of putting the Rams on this pedestal and whatnot. Nobody's really talking about what the Bills are doing. The Bills put up 400 passing yards last week on Miami. Correct. I, I'm not expecting them to do 400 yards on the Rams, but they are at home. The Rams playing the early slot again, like they did against Philly last week. I'm I'm rolling Bills minus two and a half. If I've got this under a field goal, I feel pretty damn good about that. I like this Bills team. I like the Bills defense. I think they're going to get after Jared Goff. I Love this spot. Uh, yeah, give me give me the Bills all day. Give me the so Bills all day. So not a gambling day. pick of mine, obviously. This is going to be one of the most exciting games of the weekend, I believe. And I think we're going to know, are the Rams legit or are the Bills legit? This will be the best competition either of these teams have faced, okay? Oh, yes. I mean, I, neither one of them have played anybody good, all right? The Bills have played the Dolphins and the Jets. The Dolphins fight hard, but... 
they're they're not very good. And and the Rams obviously hadn't played anybody good either. And we we've talked about the letdown of the Cowboys and what we think of them. I, I just I'm with you. I think Josh Allen's playing well. And he are we gonna see Aaron Donald just muck all that up? Probably. That's what he does. But how are they gonna adjust to that? How is that coach, I mean, you know what I feel about Sean McDermott. I've been talking about it for three years. This guy's the most underrated coach in the NFL. Nobody talks about him. Nobody brings his name up ever, and 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 they should. He oh, yeah. is a legit football coach in the NFL. He's absolutely in the pantheon of somebody you should be worried about scheming against you. Okay, that he's gonna he's gonna create a problem. He's a really good football coach. I I think I take the Bills here too. I I thought you might. I thought you might. Uh, Philip Wiggins jumps in. If Josh Allen puts up big numbers against the Rams, are we getting MVP talk? The the problem with the MVP talk is is what Russell Wilson's done has been unbelievable, and that's against uh, a a bad team and a pretty good team. He's about to play a team that's going to be air this week, and we'll get to that game. But is he in the conversation? I think he's in the conversation after what he's done for two weeks. I think there's a four or five horse race going on, and he's undoubtedly in it. Now, he's not number one. Number one is clearly Russell, and and that's not close. I agree. I agree with you. Like, I think it, it, we got to go further in the season because Josh oh, Allen is yeah. not the he's not well, the well-known superstar. Other people superstar. are going to drop off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Other people will drop off as long as he keeps this up. Absolutely, he's in the conversation. Matt jumped in on YouTube. He said Jamal Adams was the highest paid actor in that first game. I think he's talking about Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey was the highest paid actor in that in that first game. Jamal against, uh, Adams last week against my Pats yeah. was the best player on the field when they were on defense. Yes, uh, Jose on, Mar- the, on the field. <laughs> no, you're you're right. You're right. He played it like out of his mind. He looked good. Couldn't looked stop good. him. We just couldn't stop him. No, you, you've got that right. Well, I, I'll say this. He does know the Pats. I mean, he's played them for I, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, two yeah, times he knows a year. Them. So, it is what it what, is. What they're doing with him, Greg Williams is such a moron. They're going to use yeah. him so wrong. He's going to be so bored out there in Seattle. What a moron. Jesus, yeah. somebody hit that guy in the head with a shovel. <laughs> Jose Martinez said Bengals over 46. Uh, I mean, maybe. Like I, I, I'm going to worry about team totals later in the week on these. Uh, David I, was, I don't know. I kind of want to bring up a team total we didn't talk about. That Pat's Vegas team total is 46 and a half. That, that looks a little juicy to you, boy. Is it 46 and a half? It's 46 and a half. Let's see. I've got it pulled up here. At, see, but it's it, like they don't have it up at most of the spots. It's up at Heritage. Well, and it op- well, it's up at it's up at a couple places, but it's also that's what it opened at. It's that's where it's going to be. I'm telling you. I'm curious I, I, why they don't think, have the total at, at a lot of these books just for that game. It's like just it's for that game. I don't know. Like maybe there's some injury news we're waiting on. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little little strange. Um, let's see. Brown Yeti said the Bills will lose to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. Ooh. It's a possibility. Cheers to that. That's but, a uh, long way away. You got that right, but you, you're going to have to get through the Ravens to get to that point. Uh, Brown Yeti said they're that good in my mind. Absolutely. Scott Shearer said, what's up, fellas? Hope y'all are ready for a packed weekend of football. Hey, the SEC is back, and we are moving into week three of the NFL. I am jacked. So, with that said, yeah, let's roll. Let's you're taking, rolling. You're, we're both taking the bills here. Yes, sir. Texans at the Steelers is the next one. Steelers are a four-point favorite at home. They have not looked like world beaters against the Giants or last week against, uh, and my mind just went blank. Who the, uh, oh, uh, Broncos, the Broncos. Um, and that Broncos team played with Jeff, uh, Jeff Driscoll for the majority of the game. Not great. And the Texans, of course, 0-2, you know, looked a little bit better last week, I think, against the Ravens, as opposed to in game one against the Chiefs. They just did not look good uh, against the Chiefs at all. Um, but they looked okay, I guess, in, in spots against the Ravens. Now they got to go on the road playing against Big Ben, playing another big-name team. This one kind of stinks to me a little bit. I don't like betting against the Steelers. Obviously, I'm a fan, but I'm going to do it this week. I'm going to take the Texans plus the four. Uh, this just, if you look at the number of or the, the percentage of wagers on teams, this Pittsburgh line opened at six. It's down to four. 
and there's 94% of the tickets coming in on Steelers. Smart. You're a smart man. So You're a smart man. I'm telling you, Vegas knows something. I've been saying it. This Steelers team is a fraud. I know that's your team, Gary. I'm sorry. They're that's okay. fraudulent. They beat up on two pathetic, pathetic football teams. All right? One is pathetic because they're just riddled with injuries. The other is pathetic because they hired somebody who's not a very good coach, and he hired two other people who are complete morons to be coaches, and they expect to be good on offense. You're not. You're not. They're just not, all right? This Steelers team is completely fraudulent. What I said would happen in the week one absolutely happened. Got a miracle cover by Jeff Driscoll. Jeff Driscoll for the backdoor miracle cover that I called was going to happen, happened. What do you think? Uh, listen, I know this Houston Texas team's not great. They haven't looked great. They haven't looked put together. That offensive line is in shambles, and the defensive front seven for the Steelers is really, really good. That's scary. What the hell do you think is going to happen when Watson gets a hold of this dog ass <laughs> Steelers secondary? Man, I don't, we've been pumping this Steelers defense like they are great. And these Dref Driscoll for game tying, game winning scores against you? You can't stop him? Just driving down the field like he's not afraid at all. Where is that vaunted Steelers defense is supposed to be the best defense of the country? No, sir. No, sir. Watson's going to get his hands on this team this week and he's going to shake them up. This is last week we had zero upsets until we got to Monday night. This week is going to be a bloodbath for favorites. Watch it. You might be right. This one, Houston taking a W. Steelers going down. This line stinks. 94% of the people are betting on the Steelers, and they're making the line smaller. They're begging you, put all the money you got on the Steelers. Please, please, please put your money on the Steelers because they're taking it. They're taking it all. Bill O'Brien needs to be fired if the Texans go 0-3, says Damian Estrada. I don't know if that's I, I true. Dis, I disagree with that. I that's don't think kind of a, tough a good slate. coach. Yeah. But the first two games, you can't judge him for. Those teams are far superior, and those teams are going to beat 90% of the teams on their schedule. Yeah, no, you're right. Pineapple Cook jumped in on YouTube, said the Rams underdogs two weeks in a row. What gives? Actually, they uh, they closed as a favorite, didn't they, against uh, the Eagles last week? They closed. They did close as a favorite. They but, did uh, but, close but, as a favorite. It, look, I don't think there's anything uh, – I don't but think they need to open as a dog. And that line went back and forth around a pick all day, all week long. But I, so. I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with being a dog to the Cowboys or being a dog on the road to the Bills right now. Like I think no. it's just you're playing against good teams. They're gonna be a favorite again soon. Uh Birdie jumped oh, in. Yeah. Good day, Chris and Gary. Chris dropping knowledge here. I'm on pit though. Uh, cheers to that. Cheers to that. You are with the ninety four percent of the everybody moment. else in the world. So good uh, luck. And so along with that, you're you're rolling Texans just like me. Um Let's move on. Titans at the Vikings. Um, Vikings are a two-and-a-half-point underdog, and the Vikings have not looked very good whatsoever. Kirk Cousins, three interceptions last week at the Colts. He gets to go back home, though. I guess that's good. But they weren't very good at home in week one against the Packers either. The Titans have not exactly looked fantastic, but they are 2-0 and at this point. I There's 69% of the bets on Tennessee. This opened at a pick them. It's now minus two and a half across the board. Uh, you know, it, it's moving in the in the correct direction. But, man, there's something, like, I, at some point, you got to think that the Vikings are going to get a win. And what better place to do it than at home? And, and you got to feel like the, the Titans are going to lose at some point. When we started the season off, nobody would have guessed the Titans would be 3-0 and and the Vikings would be 0-3, right? Uh, correct, and they also would not have believed that the Titans would have been favored at the Vikings. Like, that just doesn't seem likely, and yet, here we are. Here we um, are. I, I didn't write down a pick for this before we started talking, so I'm trying to figure out in my head which way. Like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll Titans because I, I just think they're the better team. I think the Vikings have got some major major problems on defense on I mean just across the board like I once this thing fell apart I think it has fallen completely apart I I'm gonna roll with the Titans I think they're just the more consistent team 100% this is one of those games where if the Titans start feeling like they're gonna lose this game it the easiest way to fix it is just hand the ball to Henry yeah and and that's the one thing that they've got that most people don't is 
if if you feel a game getting away from you, they have a monster that they can just hand the ball to. They don't have to worry about can an O-line hold up, keep the quarterback upright, and throw the football deep to a big star wide receiver, and can that person get, you know, open. We're going to give the guy the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and we know that you can't stop him. And And we might be struggling to move the offense, and they might try to do a lot of things, but worst-case scenario, we can always give it to the monster and 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 just let him go be a freak. And, and that's, that's a cheat code that they have. And it's interesting. They haven't really used it a lot. Some of that could be, we're not trying to wear them down. We're trying to find ways to win games in other ways. And so therefore a lot of these games are closer than they ever thought they would be. There's a part of me that thinks cousins is done. Yeah. Just, just done. If I'm a defense, listen, this Titans defense has not looked great two weeks in a row. If you're a defense and you want to feel good about yourself, play, bring, bring on Kirk Cousins. Oh, yeah. This guy doesn't scare anybody. He's going to give you the ball at least twice and 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 give you a shot to make some big plays and look really good. No, you're right about that. Uh, Damian Estrada said Steelers equal the Cheatriots. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Brown Yeti, no one should be fired this year. It's just been too weird talking about Bill O'Brien. Birdie said uh, yesterday is presser. Uh, Bill O, we need to start winning. Tomlin, we took too many penalties, so we're going to have refs at practice. One coach wishing for wins. The other coaching his team how to win. Uh, that's kind of an issue. Uh, and then Birdie told everybody, hit the like button. So, <laughs> Philip Wiggins, I'm a Titans fan. Zimmer's going to pull out some stops to beat the Titans. You have to stop Derrick Henry and make uh, Tanny Hill throw the ball. Easier said than done. Well, especially because that, that Vikings defensive line is kind of kind of bad this year. See, that's just the thing. Can't get pressure. We, we can't love Zimmer, and we've been busting, bust, uh, puffing Zimmer up all year, thinking he's going to be the difference. He's going to do something. He, he ain't magic, guys. You know, he he's not pulling a wand out of his ass and and and, and going to flick it around and make some shit happen. Okay, I, I I think he's limited by what he's got to work with. Yeah, and I just don't think this team is very good. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, Brown Yeti said Titans and Vikings are similar teams in the fact that they are run hot and heavy. Uh, with okay quarterback play, and so far the Titans have done it better. Yeah, Dalvin Cook is a good running back, but I'll, I'll take Henry over Cook, and I'll yep. take the and I might be wrong on that. By the way, they're pretty damn similar, and they're pre, well, they're not similar, but they're pretty damn close. I'll take the O line of the Titans, and right now, man, I think I'd take Vrabel over Zimmer, and I love you know how much I love Zimmer. Oh, yeah. You know how much that hurts me to say, but I today right now for a game this week. I think I'd take Mike. I think you're probably right about that. Well, I take I take Mike Vrabel. So yeah, they're both yeah. Mikes. Um, moving on from there, last one in the noon slate. I, this one's just an interesting matchup to me. It's not one of the best matchups of the day, et cetera. Bears at the Falcons, and the Falcons are a three point favorite over a team that's two and zero, whose fans think that they are fantastic again. Right? Chicago fans have been lighting up social media because they think they're back, and. This Falcons team, of course, coming off of a heartbreaking loss at the Cowboys. I mean, it, it, we talked about this on Monday. It was just utterly ridiculous. The special team stuff, all that kind of mess. So all of the conversation is about the Falcons and, oh, how bad is this team? And Dan Quinn's going to get fired and da 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 Now they come out, they're three-point favorites. And 67% of the wagers are on the Falcons. Now, I will say, with 67% of the wagers coming in on the Falcons, it has gone from them being favored by three and a half at opening down to three across the board. So it's moving the wrong way. Um, I don't know what to make of this. I would assume that the Bears are going to be a little more conservative. They are not going to throw Tannehill a lot. However, we have seen how bad this Falcons defense is. And, you know, we've also seen Trubisky be able to come out and throw the ball against bad defenses. So... I if if I had well, the to, Falcons absolutely have a bad defense. Oh yes, let's, let's not mince words here. The Falcons aren't stopping this Bears offense. I, that's I I think I have to go Bears plus three here. Yes, sir, one hundred percent. Are we? So we're agreeing, man. We are agreeing on every game except for well, the we didn't so agree on the Patriots yet. So yeah, yeah but that's what oh, I said. Yeah. Every game but but one. Um. Yeah. So, but yeah, I I figure Bears have got to get this one done. You know. I mean, we'll see. I think, the wrong, I think the wrong team's favored. I just, you want to bet on that Falcons team after last week? Be my guest. Yeah. Be my guest. I will I will gladly be wrong with the other team if if it comes down to it. That's but right. I, I ain't I'm putting not, my money listen, on the Falcons. It won't be the last time I'll be wrong, but I damn sure ain't going to be wrong on the Falcons. 
Let I've only got one uh, Sunday afternoon game because there are kind of some duds uh, right oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it could have been some interesting games, but uh, but the injuries not. killed them. Yeah. So so far, so I've got Cowboys at the Seahawks as the huge game. Yeah, as the most interesting. The, the Cowboys don't want to fall to one and two, uh, and the Seahawks. I mean, have just been lighting up everybody so far. You saw what they were able to do on Sunday Night Football. You saw what they did in Week One against the Falcons. They. Russell Wilson, we've already talked about him on the show. I mean, he's just outstanding, right? Everything's great. All Best this kind of stuff. in the world. And the Cowboys are coming off of one of the most emotionally draining wins maybe ever. Like, it's they the acted like they won the game. Super Bowl. It was unbelievable. So, so Dak looked good. Zeke looked good. Like, that offense looks good so far. They had some issues with the Rams in week one. Looked like they got them kind of fixed last week. But that, I'll tell you this. That defense is missing a bunch. That is a major league problem. When you're going up against Russell Wilson, uh, the the line is five as it sits. It opened at three and a half. Ninety three percent of the public is on Seattle, and it's up to five. I I don't know that five is enough here. I like Seattle a lot. Like I, I should. I like going against the public a lot, but in my head, just making a pick here, I think, I think the Seahawks win this by at least a touchdown, and I feel like they probably win it by more. Like maybe I'm crazy. I, no, I think you're on the right side of this. I'm I'm going to take the Cowboys. I'm going to take the Cowboys and the points. I hope to God it keeps going up. I hope it keeps getting bigger. Betting against Russell Wilson is just not smart right now. i just betting that there's going to be uh, just a bloodbath of upsets. I think I think statistically 30, 35%, 40% every week of underdogs win outright. And the fact that we had one out of 16 happen last week, at some point in time, the averages worked themselves out, which means we have to have a week where instead of having five or six, we're going to have eight or nine. Uh, Birdie said, who is going to play defense in this game? Uh, nobody, which is the number that you should be betting right now, is 55, 56 at most books. It's going to be 57 yeah. by Sunday if you wait. You play the over. Because that Seattle defense is banged up. They are beat up. And uh, the Cowboys defense is, like I said earlier, air. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Russell Wilson will throw the football as a touchdown to at least five different people again. Terry, again. Terry jumped in, by the way, and said, Sean Lee's getting around on those crutches real good. That might be the game changer. Yeah, he, he's no. just hating on these Cowboys, man. No, Sean, Sean Lee will never. Never be anything good again. He's just too hurt. Uh, Brown Yeti said the Cowboys way to hurt, and have they beat Seattle at Seattle since Dak has gotten there? No, they have not. Um, no, they have not. Let's see. Matt said a lot of people here drive cars and trucks covered in Cowboys stuff. The bad thing is they run out of gas in December. <laughs> Joseph Gomez said Mike McCarthy will, uh, will, or maybe McCarthy will stop trying to run a trick play twice when it's fourth and five. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I think it's going to be a fun game. I think it's going to be oh, a fun no. game. It's going to be a spectacular game. Points will come abound because this Seahawks team is not stopping this Cowboys offense either. Okay. They, they might stop them for a drive or two, but there's going to be points to be had in this game. I know you're, you're a hundred percent. It's going, it's going to happen. Seattle's going to score and score fast. Cowboys are going to score. I, I don't know how fast they score. And I, I think there's going to be a lot of points. That doesn't concern me at all. I, this number get to 58, 59, don't matter. It's not enough. They, both these teams are hitting 30. We're getting over 60. And uh, at some point in time, I'm just betting the law of averages. I just, I was shocked when this number came out. I thought this number would be around five and a half or six to open. And then, People would go crazy, and I thought they would try to bet it to a point where you couldn't tease it down to a Seahawks just win. Yeah. And the fact that it opened so short, it my fear is, is I feel good about the Cowboys because Vegas is not too afraid of that. Yeah. No, you're you're 100% right about that. You're 100% right. I mean, they still got talent. They still got talent. It is what it is. Uh, Damian said, I wouldn't be surprised if this game goes into overtime. Uh, the Brown Yeti said the trick play will be that he actually punted it. And old school metal said, I'll take those Falcons. Hey, cheers to that. Take them Falcons, man. Cheers to you. We got two more games to discuss before we give you our best bets. If you guys would, do us a favor. Hit that like button. Make sure you are subscribed. Share out the show. All those good things. And 
do us a favor. Go over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. You can find our college football content over there. We gave out our picks yesterday for the college football weekend. Uh, now, that was before they did a bunch of postponements and all that kind of mess. But either way, go over and check them out for the weekend. Keep up with us. All the good stuff. Two more games. We're going to talk about Sunday night football and Monday night football. Sunday night, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers go down and meet up with Drew Brees and the Nall and Saints. Uh, Corey Weaver said, you guys are a breath of fresh air. Keep it up. Hook them. Cheers to that. Hey, hook them, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to go there on you, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, look, Saints, three-point favorites at home. I uh, The Packers have obviously played better. I mean, they're undefeated, right? It is what it is. This opened at six. You got 55% of the bets on the Saints, and it's gone all the way down to three. That that obviously means you've got more money coming in on the Packers. We're not looking at the money side. We're just looking at the number of wagers that have come in for these offshore books. I uh, Joseph Gomez said, if you bet all the 0-2 teams with the points, you'll make money this week. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably bet that. I'd probably bet that. But we ain't talking about that right now. We're talking about Green Bay and the Saints. The Packers have looked really good in the first two weeks, but they have also played two divisional games against teams that are uh, hurting on defense. I don't know that the Saints are necessarily hurting on defense. The Saints are dealing with a short week in which they went to Las Vegas and kind of got it handed to them a little bit. They, they look good early. Without Michael Thomas, they were not able to keep that momentum going on offense. Alvin Kamara was okay. Drew Brees, again... I, yeah, it, old school metal jumps in Breeze rag arm now. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. We it, we talked about that before the season started, and it's we not getting better. We talked about how, yeah, this guy at some point in time when these guys fall off, they fall off. We think everybody's going to be Tom. Nobody, nope, nobody in the world is ever going to be Tom. Okay. Hey, old school metal. By the way, said love the show, guys. You may be wrong, but you got a great show. <laughs> hey, you, you that right. is my entire philosophy in life. <laughs> This guy has absolutely figured out my cheat code. I don't care if I'm right or not. I'm, I'm, I've been wrong my whole life. Yeah, we Nothing just, but losers my yeah, whole we're life. Just trying to figure this out. Now, Gomez jumps in, by the way. He said, the loss of Adams is the only thing holding me up. Need to check the run defenses. I can't stop playing the over. Uh, the line, or the the total here, opened at 52. It is now sitting at 52 and a half. I am terrified of that over. It's sitting yeah, at a key number. Like I, yeah, and the, here's the thing: the sneaky thing about this this uh, Saints team is is they're they're pretty. I know I know they struggled in the second half of last week uh, again Monday night against this, uh, the the uh, Raiders, but th- this is a really good defense. This is a really good defense on all levels. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I, the over under does scare me a little bit here, and I think both of these teams. The best play for both of these teams is to. Give the ball to the running backs. Just yeah. that's that's give it to Jones, give it to Kamara over and over and over again. And uh, you know, that that's what that's what I see, which means that's a little scary for the over under for the total. Um I was shocked to see the Saints were favored. I thought this was gonna be a pick. I honestly did. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I was on it. Um Birdie said, yes, Breeze is a concern, but back-to-back games with 100 yards and penalties, Rodgers is going to eat them up. Um, yeah. Simon Coolhand, by the way, said, you can go broke betting like that, like betting all the 0-2 teams. Yeah, 100%. Well, if you bet well, yeah, every game on the board. Statistically, like, it might work out for you. <laughs> Excuse me, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not putting one nickel on the Giants or the Jets. Yeah. I'm just not. Uh, uh, yeah, at some point in time, they're going to cover games. That's fine. I, I, I'm not touching them. No, no, you're, you're 100% right. Uh, I just... I, I, so with with this Packers and Saints game, it's it's sitting on that key number of three. Saints are at home. You have to think that they want to come back and get a win here. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Aaron Rodgers here. Well, yeah, I'm like getting I, Aaron Rodgers yeah. right now and points. He's playing like an MVP. He's in that conversation. And Aaron Jones and get, looks like an absolute beast right yeah, now. Yeah, and I get a head start. I, I know Adams isn't out, isn't playing, but 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 I don't think Thomas is playing either. That's a wash right there. Yeah. Give me the rest of the teams, the way they've been. Uh, it's not close. Aaron Rodgers is so far better than Drew Brees right now. It's not close. Yeah, so I'm rolling with that. Now, finally, we're going to close uh, this segment with this. Now, our pick segment, not very long, but Chiefs at the Ravens on Monday Night Football, it does not get any bigger than this game. I mean, this is the last two MVPs. 
You got last year's Super Bowl MVP. You got Pat Mahomes against Lamar Jackson. You got two pretty good defenses, decent enough defenses. Uh, the Ravens, of course, a really good defense. This really good. Is, uh, these are the two favorites to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl this season uh, with a good reason. Now, yes. I am, I, I will say this. I think the Ravens have looked like the better football team through two weeks. But how much of last week's Chiefs game was them prepping up for this Ravens game, thinking that they would not even have to really show up to be able to beat the Chargers? That's what I'm curious about. I Now, we can sit here and say they're professionals. They, you know, practice the same every week. They prepare the same every single week. But I think we all know the truth here. When you got a game of this magnitude coming up on a Monday night, it, maybe you're kind of looking ahead a little bit. Maybe. You know, they there were some spots where they might have gotten a little lucky to win last week. Well, yeah, they got real lucky to win last week. The The line is sitting at three, three and a half in, in a lot of spots here. Opened at two and a half, was bet up. Now it's been bet back down. A lot of people jumping on the Chiefs once it got up to that three and a half. It's still sitting at three and a half in a lot of spots, and that's what I've got it at. I've got it Ravens minus three and a half for us, for our picks on here. I, I got to tell you, I think that the Ravens, are are coming out guns a blazing. I think that they feel like they should have been in the Super Bowl last year. It should not have been the Mahomes show. I don't feel like they they feel like they have been respected for what they did last season, and they threw it all away with a bad, bad early playoff loss to the Titans. And this Chiefs team ain't that Titans team. This Chiefs team, I don't think, is as capable of stopping the run as some of these other teams that will give the Ravens problems. You got a healthy Hollywood Brown. You got a healthy Mark Andrews. This is, I, I love this Ravens team, and I will go on and tell you, I will be taking the Ravens minus three and a half here. I know with that hook, a lot of people are going to be all over. You know, you're giving Patrick Mahomes a head start and all this kind of stuff, but I really like this Ravens team. I think they are looking for blood this week. We're going the same way. Yeah, I thought you might be doing that. We're going the same way. I've told you this. I think this Baltimore team's the best team in the NFL. Yeah. And if there's ever another team, every year we look at this and say, who could go undefeated? Who could go 16? No. I think this is the only team that I would bet to go 16 and up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Birdie said, how insane is it the books are going to make money giving Patrick Mahomes three in the hook? It's almost unbelievable. That's <laughs> I mean, maybe so. Uh, Joseph Gomez said, Fox bet has it four with no fear. Ingram being hurt, tightened, and focused the Chiefs' D on Lamar in that game. Uh, let, yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Uh, hey, Birdie said, Mahomes and Rodgers getting points this week. We may never see this again. We never see this again. Yeah. No, you're you're 100%. Birdie I, said, I, money coming I, in I, on I the I think Ravens. the Saints, I think the Rodgers line is wrong. I think this line's right. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Like, I... I love the Ravens in this spot. I, I think they are pissed off. And listen, off. we love the Chiefs. If the Chiefs come out and win this game, I'll happily be wrong on this pick right now. I will not be betting this game. I will be watching every second, every moment of it, every play of this game. Yes. Yes, I agree. We are going to have a fantastic time watching this game. Folks, man, at some point, maybe we need to live stream us watching one of these Monday night games. So, Because that that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think this 